Good morning. I'm so delighted to be here celebrating this wonderful day with you. We're a lot alike, you and I. It's the color of these robes and all that it represents. It was 30 years ago I sat in this very auditorium waiting to walk across this stage to be hooded by my advisor. Today, I stand here as an advisor waiting to hood my own student. Hey, Michael. <laughs> I remember my time as a graduate student at Georgia Tech so fondly. Sure, I worried about passing the qualifying exam. Actually, I don't think I got more than two hours of sleep the night before. I was just so nervous. But once you pass the qualifying exams and your courses, graduate school can be pretty interesting. You get to spend all of your time thinking about things and trying new things. Grad school was where I learned to be independent and innovative and resourceful. It's where I learned the satisfaction and joy of being a researcher. Today, you will leave here with your hard-earned degree. So it's time to pause and contemplate your, your career path. There's a statistic from the World Economic Forum predicting that today's graduates will have more than 15 jobs in their lifetimes. What does that mean for you as a PhD? My own career journey started with a job working as an engineer in industry. I got to work on the space shuttle flight controls and on a space station project. It was really cool. I know that many of you also worked in industry. What did you gain from that experience? I learned professionalism and responsibility and discipline. But most importantly, I learned what it was like to work on a team towards a common goal, not on an individual project, but it was in the very fabric of the culture. That time in industry left a, a lasting impression on me. My next job was in academia. I became a faculty member in electrical engineering here at Tech immediately after finishing my PhD. How many of you are planning to go into academia? You will spend many years balancing research, teaching, and service. Recall what I said about 15 jobs in your lifetime? In a research position, this might mean changing focus and direction of your work. For example, I learned a lot about computer science to go from being an electrical engineer to a computer engineer. And then I went even further when I started doing work in engineering education. That's basically behavioral science. What an eye-opener to go from understanding how technology interacts to how people interact. Another career shift will come for those of you who want to go into management or become a project director or administrators. My background in engineering and in behavioral science set me up for administrative jobs. My first one was as associate chair for, undergrad, for graduate studies. Then I switched to being associate chair for undergraduate studies. Most recently, I became vice provost. So my count is seven jobs so far. Along the way, I had three wonderful kids. Some of you have kids now. Some of you are thinking about it. There's a whole nother world out there besides work. Personally, I did a stint as a den mother for Cub Scouts, a Girl Scout leader, a homeroom mom, a Science Olympiad coach, and a whole lot of K through 12 outreach activities. So depending on how you count it, that could be several more jobs. Considering the career shifts that I made, there's some advice that I'd like to share with you. Most important is to be willing to challenge yourself and to be willing to shift into new areas of specialty. It may feel sort of like starting a PhD all over again. You may feel vulnerable, trading your expertise in one area to become a learner or apprentice in another. What does that look like? Well, for me, I read, take online courses, enroll in workshops. I even sat in on a few courses while I was a professor here. 
Mostly, I talk to other people with different expertise to get their perspectives or to help me clarify my understanding. As, as a student, you may have been comfortable going to ask professors for help on your research. After today, you will be a colleague. And it may feel a little bit more awkward to ask for help from fellow researchers, but do it anyway. If you can keep expanding what's in your wheelhouse, you'll be more adaptable to changing times. And even more so, if you can keep the joy of learning alive, life is just so much more fun. For example, I learned something recently that was really inspirational. You, we, the, um, you and I, we know a lot about innovation. By its very nature, the PhD is about being creative. There's a company called IDEO that developed a Venn diagram that describes the conditions for sustainable and impactful innovation. The first circle in the diagram is desirability. What do we want? What do we need? What should we do? This circle embodies the fields of ethics and, and humanities and social sciences and design. Desirability. The second circle is feasibility. What can we do? How can we make this? How can we solve this? How can we understand this? This circle represents engineering, science, and computing. Engineering, science, and yeah, computing. Um, feasibility. The last circle is viability. How can we make it sustainable? Marketable. This covers the fields of policy and business, viability. Ideas born at the intersection of desirability, feasibility, and viability are more sustainable and impactful. Said another way, the intersection of the humanities and sciences with business and technology is a sweet spot for innovation. This is where Georgia Tech lives. And this intersection is where I'd like all of us to strive to move. Not just to be able to solve problems, but being able to identify what problems need to be solved. Perhaps we all can't be adept at all three areas, but we can learn to talk and work across disciplinary lines, appreciating what people from each area brings to the table. To me, Stretching my mind into these disciplines that are so different from my formal training has been so rewarding to me, not only intellectually, but it has enabled my career to move forward and made me more effective in what I do. Always learn and be agile enough to pivot directions as needed or as your interests vary. Open your mind to new perspectives from different fields of thought. Cross those disciplinary boundaries. Finally, Georgia Tech would love to be partners with you now and as you progress through your careers. We would love for you to return and give back to future students. Give seminars, judge events, be a mentor, and support future PhD students. But our goal is that we, Georgia Tech, will be there for you as well. A place where you can attend lectures and workshops, Take courses and learn new fields. A place where we can support you, not just through seven career changes like I made, but 15 as predicted. It's a new era for us. You as graduate alums and we, the faculty and administrators here, building a bridge, a partnership that will last throughout your lives. This partnership is at the heart of the Creating the Next in Education initiatives here. These initiatives strive for a lifetime commitment to you, wherever you live. I hope that you'll work with us to create that future. But let's start thinking and planning about that future tomorrow. Today is a day to celebrate your tremendous accomplishments. We, the faculty, are so very proud of you for earning Georgia Tech's highest degree. Congratulations, fellow PhD alums of Georgia Tech. Thank you.